What's up everyone? This is Tyson at Titans of CNC. I'm standing in front of the Doosan SMX3100. I thought it'd be cool today to do a video explaining how to power up the machine, how to get it warmed up, and then navigating around the controls, going between the different screens on the machines, what you need to do to index tools, to handle jog, and some of the little differences between the previous video that I did on the 2600 and this machine where you have to navigate between two screens with an upper and a lower turret. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to flip the breaker on the side of the machine and turn that on. After the breaker's flipped, we're going to hit the on button on the front of the machine here. We'll let the machine do its startup. So the first screen that pops up is the position screen. The machine's an emergency stop right now. You have to hit the emergency stop button every time you power off the machine. So I'm going to clear that right now. And then I'm going to hit machine ready. That clears the emergency stop alarm. Let's talk about the screen for a second. You can see it's split into two sections here. You have an upper position here, and then you have a lower position here. In the corner, it also says upper right here. It says upper because I have the upper screen selected right now. So that means the upper screen is the main screen right now. This machine's actually split so that you have a separate screen for the upper spindle and for the lower turret. When you load a program into this machine, you're actually loading in two programs, one for the upper channel and one for the lower channel. So to switch channels between the upper and the lower channel and to switch your screen over here between the upper and lower screens, you have your selections over here for upper and then you have the lower and then you have a combined screen for when you're running your program and you want both of them to run at the same time. So upper and lower at the same time. If you press this multiple times, it'll switch between your main display. But when you push the start button, both of them are going to run at the same time. Now you can see when I'm switching between upper and lower, the alarms are changing at the bottom screen here. The upper spindle has an alarm right now because every time you start up the machine, you need to warm up the upper spindle. It's also saying that my automatic tool changer door is in manual mode. So before I start my program, I need to change that to auto mode. Those are both alarms that pertain to the upper spindle. When I switch to the lower channel, you can see the only alarm I've got here is that my door is open. It's something to get used to with this machine. And it's a little intimidating because you're kind of running two machines at the same time. But operating the two, there's not too much difference between the two. They're both, you know, they both have the same screens between the upper and the lower channel. So let's move on with starting up the machine. Like I mentioned, with the upper spindle, we have to warm it up. So there is an M command that we're going to be putting into MDI. You can see it in this alarm screen. It says command M102 in MDI. That's going to load up our warm up program by hitting M102. The only catch is for the warm up program, you have to make sure that tool number one is loaded into the top spindle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I'm in my upper channel right now. I've got upper selected. I'm going to click on MDI and then in my top buttons here, I'm going to hit program. That takes me to my MDI screen. We're going to type in a tool change command to load tool number one. With the upper spindle, you have to command it like a mill. So what we're going to do is we're going to put an M6 for a tool change. And then I'm going to type in my tool number M6 T001 for tool number one. And then I'm going to give it offset number one by putting in 001. So I've got M6 T001 001. I'm going to put an end of block, hit input, and that's going to change it to tool number one. Afterwards, I'm going to type in M102 end of block and hit input. So this MDI program is just going to tool change to tool number one and then it's gonna run up my warm up program. I'm gonna close the door and then we'll hit the start button. One more thing before I start this, I need to take it out of manual mode for the tool carousel. So here we have our screen for the tool carousel. So we're gonna put it into auto mode, click that button. And now the machine can take tools on its own using tool commands. So let's hit cycle start. So it's doing a tool change right now. So it's switching from tool 42 to tool one, goes back to the home position, 
and now it's gonna start warming up the tool by spinning it. Cool, so the warm-up program ran through. Depending on if you're running the machine every day or if it's shut off for a while, it'll take longer depending on how long the machine's been turned off. But if you're running it every day, it should only take a couple minutes. So I'm in reference mode right now. We can start homing out the machine in different axes. You can see these lights up here. We have a set of axes on the top and a set of axes on the bottom. The top ones are for the upper channel and the bottom ones are for the lower channel. Anything in green has already been homed out. The ones that aren't need to be homed out. The only exception is the C axis. We don't need to home that one out. For the upper channel, we can home out the upper spindle in X, Z, Y, and B. I'm already homed out in those, except the B axis is flashing right now. It's in home, but it's in a different position. It's rotated to the side. So I can flip it right now. I can t send it to the home position. I want to make sure that I'm in my upper channel mode and then I'm going to click on my turret rotation buttons here. I'm going to click on the center one. That rotates my upper spindle and puts it vertical. Now it's home down in B. If I needed to home out in X, Z, and Y, I would just press the X button and the Z button and then this Y button here to home those out in the upper channel. Now let's home out the lower one. I'm going to click on my lower button here switch it to the lower channel and now I'm going to home out my machine in X. So for the bottom turret you have X2, Z2, and A. I'm going to home it out in X first so we'll click the X button. Now X2 is lit up. I'm going to click the Z button now. It doesn't matter which direction you push. Z2 is highlighted. Now I'm going to home out the A axis. The A axis is actually the back of the machine where the second chuck is. So that comes in and out. I'm going to home it out by holding down the A axis enable button and we're going to home it out in A. So everything's homed out now. One other thing I'm going to go over while the machine door is closed. You can index the turret manually by being in the lower channel and then also being in one of these three modes here. So being either in the reference mode, the button jog mode, or the handle jog mode. As long as one of these three are highlighted, you can index your turret by picking which tool station you want to be on and then pushing the middle button here. It's exactly like the Doosan 2600 that I previously covered. I'm going to take it back to tool two and now let's open the door. Now let's go over the two jog buttons. First we have our button jog. So this is going to let us jog with the X axis and Z axis buttons on the panel. This will depend on which mode you're in. So if you're in the lower channel, you'll move the lower turret. You can do it while the door is open. It's just going to be very slow. If you want to rapid, hold down the middle button and push which direction you want to go in. But you can only do that when the door is closed. Same deal with the upper spindle. Just make sure you're in that jog mode and then you can go to the upper channel. And now you can control the upper spindle using these buttons. The handle jog is very similar. We go to handle jog mode. The only difference is you're going to control your axes using this switch over here. And then you can also use the handle jog. Depending on which channel you're in, you have to switch this to the proper X or Z axis that you want. So if you're in the upper channel, you need to go to Z1 or X1. And then that will let you move up or down or side to side if you're going in Z. You also have your speed commands here. So if you change your feed rate, you'll handle jog a lot slower or faster if you want to. Now, if I want to move the lower turret with this, I have to make sure I go to the lower channel. But then I also have to switch my axis here. You'll see if I try to move it right now, nothing's happening. I'm not on one of the lower channel axes. So I need to switch this from Z1 and go to one of my second channels here. So Z2. Now I can move the lower turret in Z. Same with X. You have to go to X2. And now you can move it in X. You can also control the A axis 
with the lower channel. So here I can control the A axis and I can bring my second chuck out. This is really useful if you're trying to touch off jaws for a chuck transfer so we can bring it into position. So likewise, if you're in the upper channel and you want to jog, you have to make sure you switch your handle jog back to X1, Z1, Y, or B. So if I try to jog right now while I'm in X2, nothing's gonna happen. So up here we have our program controls. I've got my edit mode, memory mode, and then MGI, which we just used to run my warm-up program. This is gonna change depending on which channel you're using. So if I'm using the upper channel, my main program screen is gonna be on the left side. And if I'm using the lower channel, my lower program is gonna be on the right side. I mentioned it at the start of the video, but you are gonna load two separate programs, one into the upper channel, one into the lower channel. It sounds pretty daunting at first because coming from another machine where you're only running one program, to suddenly have two, and these two programs kind of act on their own, you have to time them together so one program waits for the other program and makes sure that it's not gonna hit anything that's running on the other channel. But you can actually attack, like when you're setting up your machine, you run them one at a time to prove them out and you just take it into one chunk at a time so it's not overwhelming. In edit mode, we have our program screen here. If you hit program one more time, you have your program folders where you can load up your programs. You can load them from USB or you can load them from memory card. To load up the programs, it's exactly like it was on the Doosan 2600. So check out my video if you need to see how to load up a program. The only difference is you're gonna make sure that if you wanna load up an upper program, make sure you're in the upper channel. If you're gonna load up a program for the lower turret, make sure you're in the lower channel. You can see when I hit my lower channel button, my list of program changes. So I've got my upper programs here and my lower programs here. So they're completely separate. Hit my program button one more time to get my, to my program screen. If I'm ready to run my program, I can go to memory mode. And here I would be able to start my programs up. A couple of buttons I'll talk about while in memory mode. So while your program's running, these are useful buttons to know. You have your optional stop controls, so you can stop after every M01. So when you're going through your program, you can take it one chunk at a time. You have your optional block skip. That'll skip any slashes that are in your program single block so you can run one block at a time. So one line at a time, every time you push the start button, it'll run. Program restart, if you need to start in the middle of the program. You have your coolant controls here. You have a set of buttons for the top channel, set of buttons for the bottom channel. So for the bottom one, you only have turret coolant on this machine right now. And then for the top one, you have your flood coolant for the outside and then you have the two spindle coolant for the center of the spindle. You also have controls for the lights, for the chip conveyor. If you need to bring out the tool probe, you need to go to one of the uh, jog modes here, and then you can use the quick setter. And then also a control for the oil mist collector and to unclamp a tool that's in the top spindle. Same deal, be in one of the handle jog modes, and then you can hold down this button to unclamp a tool in the top spindle. You have your rapid overrides here, so you can slow it down if it's your first time running the program. And then you also have feed rate controls down here. These are dials, so you can overwrite your feed rate in your program. You have a separate one for the upper, and you have a separate one for the lower. You can change these to however you want. If you're in the middle, the 100% button will light up. So that means you're running at your normal speed. You also have a spindle override, same deal, it's a knob. And then you can see I have a couple of keys on the machine here. The bottom key is a program protect, so you can actually lock it if you want nobody to mess with anything on the machine, so they can't load any programs, they can't change nothing. And then these two keys up top, they're actually to change what spindle mode you're in. So if you want to do OD or ID clamping, you just have to hit this key here and it'll switch to ID clamping or OD clamping. 
You have one for the left chuck, one for the right chuck. Up here I have my offset and wear page. And if I push it one more time, I have my settings. Going back to the offset and wear page, this will change depending on what channel you're on. So if you're on the lower channel, you have all your offsets for the lower turret. If you go to the upper channel, this will change so you have all your offset for your carousel. If I want to set a work offset, like my G54, I have to make sure that I go into my settings page. So I'm going to click my offset and setting button one more time. We'll get to settings. And you can see on the side, I've got a button for work. So I'm going to click this soft key here. And now I'm on my work coordinates. When setting up this machine, I need to make sure I set my G54 on my upper channel. And then I also need to set a G54 for the lower channel. They're both treated separately in the machine. So you need to set work offsets for both the lower turret and the upper spindle. We have a message button. This will show any alarms that are currently popped up. And you also have a history you can look at. We have a custom one button and a custom two button here. The custom two screen loads up a few more different menus we can go into. But there's a couple in here that I really like. We have a detailed alarm history where I can look up and get information on any alarms that popped up. This has been really helpful. If there's multiple alarms, you click on which button and it'll give you a detailed report on it. But then if I click on this little tool probe up here and I click this soft key, this is the tool offset screen that you're going to be using for the upper channel. So when you're touching off any tools in the upper spindle, this is the screen that pops up automatically when you bring down that tool probe. So you'll find yourself on the screen a lot when you're setting up this machine. There's also a tool load monitor screen here, the number two option. Here we have a tool load monitor. You have one for the lower, one for the upper. We did a video recently explaining how to work the tool load monitor on the 2600. So if you haven't seen that, check that out. But you can set that all up on this machine. Finally, the number six. So if you're wondering about any M codes on this machine, you can search for it through this menu. Cool, so that was a quick overview of the SMX3100. If you saw the previous video on the 2600 overview, you can see it's pretty similar to it. You can see it's pretty crazy that there's two different screens for the upper and the lower, but navigating through things, it's very similar to the 2600. I know I glossed over a few things like the tool setter and the coolant controls, but we'll have plenty of videos on our channel explaining how to use those. So thank you very much for watching. If you like this video and you like what we do, be sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video. And I'll see you next time. Thank you very much.